Hi, this is Wilderness Surviving to Thriving, and this is the Beginner's Guide to Blacksmithing, How to Make a Knife. Now, if you're new to blacksmithing, or you're thinking about getting started uh, to blacksmith, you need to watch this video in full, and then you also have to watch two others, uh, how to make charcoal, and how to make a cheap blacksmithing station without an anvil, I believe I called it. So make sure you, if you have all those three, and you watch all those three, you're ready to get started. So it's really easy to do. So, you know, uh, make sure you're always wearing proper safety equipment, eye protection, um, gloves, you know, make sure, you know, you're wearing the proper clothing, but always be safe, guys. Let's get started. Let's get to the fire. All right, thanks. Uh, find some metal. You know, I found all this metal here. Um, it was a rail trail I found it on. So, um, you know, I don't think you can just walk your tracks and pull this off. I think that's illegal to do that so but this was a rail trail so you were allowed on it so I found this metal on the side I'm not quite sure what this is but you know maybe I'll make an axe out of that I think for the video purpose I think we're going to go ahead and I'll show you how to fashion a uh, blacksmith and knife out of this a railroad spike but the first thing you want to do is you want to throw everything in the fire just like that this is the easy part just throw it in there make sure it's in the coals I'm going to build a fire on top of that. What you want to do is um, get the coals nice and hot, throw it in there. Get the, You want a slow cool. That's what we're going for. You want a slow cool. When you have a slow cool, it softens the metal. So I'm going to just let this go overnight. Just let it burn out. I'll pick it up in the morning, and the, the metal should be softer. Now, if you do a fast cool, now what happens is it hardens the metal. And that's what we do at the end, which I'll explain in a minute. But this way, the stuff is going to slow down. You know, as the fire dies, it gets, um, you know, it's going to reduce in heat and then until it goes out. So it's a very slow cool. So that's what we're doing right now. I'm just going to sit back, have a drink, roast some marshmallows. <laughs> Maybe I'll cook a steak over this or something. This is the fun part. But um, I'll come back in the morning when it's cooled down. Okay, it's like two days later. And uh, time to remove. Okay, yep, it's cool. Actually, this section is still hot. But I'm going to use this. Maybe I'll do something with this also. So that's going to be a huge knife. But let me go ahead and bring this over here. And you know what? I'm just going to throw the spike in here. Just throw the spike. I'm going to work it from this end. So you just kind of put that in to the coals here. I should wait until I should chop up this wood more and um, wait until the coals get a little hotter. I just started this fire. But anyways, let's turn this on. I'm just going to flip this onto high. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to get I'm going to uh center that to the middle, but you can see how that's working like that. Um, you should watch two other videos of mine. I haven't put them out yet, but um, check out um, this full video. And also, you want to see uh, my blacksmithing you know, setup, I guess this could be called, and also how to make uh, charcoal. So check out those two videos. I'm going to heat this up, and then uh, I'm going to take this out, and I'll show you how to pound on it in a minute. All right. You can see I got to move this around. There's really no coals down there because I just got started. So I am uh, you know, just kind of moving this around to wherever the heat is. Um, but eventually the coals will be filling up all there. You know, I have a glove on, I guess. I don't always use a glove, but you should use a glove, especially if you're new. And, uh, you know, you, you just keep on placing this in the hot coals where you're going to pound. And um, once you see that red hot, you're ready to uh, take it out and move over to the next step. So. Fired out. It's, I think it's hot enough. Um, I always shut down the hair dryer first just to give it a rest. I don't want it to burn out. So I'm just going to take this out. It's a good idea to use gloves for this part. I actually have this adjusted correctly. Get a tight grip because you don't want to lose it over here. I'm just going to bring it to my anvil. And just hammer. You want to stand back. You don't have any glasses. You should have glasses on. And it, you just want to hammer it. You know, actually, I'm going to hammer it here because I'm going to draw it out a little bit first. So I'm going to hammer it in the middle. You know, I don't have a good grip. I want to get, yeah. I'm going to draw it out a little bit so I'm going to hammer it in the middle. And then you just keep on, you know, turn it around, hammer it on the other end, keep it straight. And I can't see still. Should have glasses on. Smoke out of my eyes. 
So, once it's not moving anymore, it's time to put it back in. So, yeah, I can, let me just put it back in. I it should be a little hotter. So, I'm gonna put it back in the fire here. I'm gonna turn it back on. Put some more uh, charcoal in there. And uh, we'll just hammer it again. Okay, as you can see, I hammered this two times. Um, you know, I mean, two, two cycles. I mean, took it out of the fire twice, however you want to say it. But uh, anyways, you can kind of see how it's shaping up. And it goes down pretty fast just for, you know, two times of hammering or whatever. So you can see how thick it was there or there. You can see that's a good angle right there. And I always turn off that and let that rest a little bit. Um, that is, uh, it did get a five-star rating from a Jersey girl, so I, I know it's a pretty good hair dryer. Nah, just kidding. Um, that was back in the 80s. They used to have big hair. But anyways, this is what it looks like now. We'll keep going now. That's how red hot it should be. So I'm just moving it around, putting it in, ow, putting it in the hot spots. But that's how red hot you want it. Okay, this is about, I don't know, four or five times of hammering, sets of hammering. And you can see how it kind of like gets, you know, like angle, like just keep it straight. So you flip it over, you know, I didn't flip it over. I lost my cameraman, so uh, it was kind of hard to record me hammering it. But um, this is from four or five times of hammering. You can see it's getting its shape. Um, don't worry too much about shape, you know, right now. Just draw it out, keep it straight, flip it over, flip it back over. And we'll continue on and I'll show you. Um, you can see on the side angle how it got skinnier. But yep, I'll keep on going and show you about, I'd say four or five times. Okay, this is about like maybe seven or eight, you know, times taking it out of the fire and hammering it. Now we have to figure out what we want to do with this. Um, you know, when you hammer before, you know it's going to extend outward. And But from here, um, you know, I'm going to start hammering closer to the blade end um, because, you know, that's, you know, you also want to look here. And you can see that's not straight, so you want to hammer on the um, the end that's down, you know, kind of make it straighter. Or, you know, you just want to make it as straight as possible. So this is where you start, you know, shaping it a little bit. Um, the tip, you know, I made one like this last time, and I never smoothed out the, you know, the imperfections there, but I really don't care about that. Uh, it's kind of like a butter knife, the tip. I don't like that. So... What I might do is, you know, make a different kind of tip. I'm not quite sure what yet. Um, you know, pointier. I'll probably make that. But figure out what you want. Like I said, you know, keep it straight. Uh, hammer, you know, make sure that line there is straight. And let me get my cameraman out here. And maybe I can, um, you know, kind of show you how I'm going to mold this to the way I want. But now it's time to worry about, you know, the tip and all that. So um, let's get to it. We, um, I decided to change. If you look down here, you can see I'm starting to bang this thing up pretty, pretty well. So I don't uh, want to hammer on this much anymore. So I'm going to switch over to this, this one here. This is like a jewelry anvil. I don't have it, like I said in my previous video, a real anvil. So I have to use this junk. This lasted a long time, um, and it's, it's finally getting beat up. So uh, we're going to continue hammering on this. So we're going to start shaping the thing. So, and like I said before. You want to make sure you um, you want to make sure you use gloves and stuff like that. Eye protection. Um, I use a, a ear protection, which I'm not doing right now, as you can see, but um, because this is very loud for me, it hurts my ears. When you get old, your ears hurt. To me, rock concerts, I guess. But anyways, um, what I'm doing now is I'm hammering down on the blade side to make it, you know, skinnier on that side. And I'm worrying about shaving now. So I'm hammering on that. And I'm going to worry about the tip next. Which maybe I'll do that right now. Let me do that right now, actually. So I'm making the, the uh, blade side skinnier. And then here, I'm just going to hammer on the tip. You know, it's really not that hot. It should be, should be hotter. So I'm going to hammer on the tip and make a hit tip. And then also what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure my hand here, which is right here. I'm not touching it. I know it's hot. And then I'm going to make a groove right in here like this. On this, this is a, this is a terrible, uh, it's not really secure enough, so I'm going to have to do that. But I'm going to hammer that to make a little groove to separate the blade. 
and I'm going to concentrate on the line to make sure it's straight. So that's what I'm doing now. And so like I said, I'm hammering there to have a separation from hand to blade. I'm hammering the tip, hammering the tip, and then I'm also going to um, concentrate on making it a little bit sharper. So that's what we're doing now. Um, I'm going to put this back in the fire since you know I, it wasn't really that hot. And you want it red hot and we'll do it again. Okay, I just want to talk about this fire. You know, if you're making your own charcoal, like I do, it's better to cut it up, you know, in little small sections like that. Um, that way, you, you know, everywhere is hot. You know, the way if you do it this way with the longer logs, um, you kind of have to keep on moving your um, your metal around to kind of get it right in between two or whatever where it's really hot. Because if you look, you know, down where the, the air is coming out, uh, there's really not too many coals right there where it's the hottest because they always get blown to the side. So it's, if you had like nice little chunks, they'll stay there. So, uh, you know, I get lazy sometimes and, you know, I don't cut these down the, the proper way. But you just kind of keep on moving it along if you have longer ones like this. And you can find the hot spots. So, you know, that's kind of what I do. But if you can see down there, I don't want to get my camera too close, it'll fry. But you can see where the air is coming up, there's no coals at all. So... If you had chunks, like I said, you know the drill. But anyway, so what I'm doing so. is I'm going to take this out, and I'm working on the tip right now. So first of all, this is not adjusted right, so I just put a hammer down like this to adjust my grip, and that's still not right either. I don't know. I'll just change my grip, I guess. Well, I just want to make sure you have a good grip. Um, as you can see, I wanted this one pointier than my last one, so I'm doing kind of like a I'll show you after I'm done. Just kind of drawing the blade out. Sometimes you just go with wherever the metal takes you. Um, you know, sometimes I have a plan most of the time. Sometimes I just go with what the metal wants me to do. I mean, I can change this formation anytime I want. But sometimes you hit it, it looks good, you go with it. So what I'm doing, you can get a close up on that. I, like I said, I want a pointier blade, so I'm going to come down and I'm going to make a pointier blade and, um, you know, more of a tip. I'll probably sharpen this side and that side on the tip and then have like that. So I, I don't know. I'm never going to use this knife. It's more for display, so uh, we'll see what happens. So let me throw it back. Let me hammer it a couple more times. It's still hot. Get it even. Get the tip more pronounced. Oh, I'm starting. Oh, see? No. Just a couple hammers, it looks a little different, right? So. Okay, it's getting a little dark here. So I'm just gonna finish this up. But you can see it's red hot. You can see it in the dark a lot better how hot it is. Um, all my stuff is junk. I need this, I just um, made this new station over here because my wife said I had to move, it was too close to the house. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to, just step back a little bit is I'm trying to just, you know, separate, you know, get, get something like that so I can separate the blade from the handle. I want to do like a slight little angle there, but this thing's not working right because i got to secure it better. And this thing's not working either. So, I'll have to secure these better because I just moved these, like I said. Let me just hold that down there. I'm trying to get like a little bend action going here. That way, it really separates the handle from the blade. If I put my hand there, I can hold it properly. But yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, just a little slight angle. And then what I'm gonna do is I might do a twist, but I have to do it tomorrow. I'm running out of film, and like you saw, I, I just ran out of film last time. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hammer this down a little bit more. I'm gonna make that more of an angle there. And then um, I'll show you the next step um, tomorrow, I guess. We'll have to refire this up. Okay, bye. Okay, I'm not set up for uh, nighttime blacksmithing in this location. I was in my old location, but not here. So um, I decided to uh, shut down for the night. And plus I need to fix, you know, a lot of this stuff since I just moved it. I got to make it more secure so I can hammer it on it. These things were moving on me. So time to cook some potatoes. I burnt the last, uh, last time I two, three times I cooked, I burnt my potatoes because I was cooked too late. I can't see the potatoes, so I live in a dark area, so um, I'm, I wrapped some tin foil around these potatoes. I'm not going to burn these ones, but I might as well use this, but you know how potatoes, um, 
take longer to cook than everything else, so let's go ahead and fire this up. We'll cook these potatoes nice and fast. And then, um, you know, I've talked about rules of three before, you know, uh, survival rules of three. And I also uh, believe in cooking rules of three. Now, you know, I believe that you have to have three things with every meal. So I got potatoes, I'm going to cook chicken there, and then uh, something else which I'm not quite sure of. So those are the, the rules of three for cooking, uh, like my survival rules of three. There are, there are some exceptions to the food rules of three, like I just said. Um, for instance, uh, pizza. You can eat pizza by itself. You don't need anything else. A salad's nice, yes, but it's not needed. Um, also, chili, maybe? Ah, it's good to have bread with chili, right? So maybe that's a rule too. Stew. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there, but still, it's one thing. Maybe rule two with that one also, because bread's good with that. But so there are exceptions to rule three. But for the most part, when you're cooking, the rules of three apply. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. We'll continue this. I have to fix it. Okay. This is what I have so far. Um, it's too early to be pounding. You can hear the rooster. But um, I'm gonna take this right here, and I'm gonna pound that to uh, make that uh, dent in a little bit more by just putting it on you know the side like that I have to fix these things to make it sure it doesn't uh, move on me um, the blade ends I'm going to um, take the blade ends make it uh, you know more like a blade down here I'm going to draw out this section right here even more so I have more of a spot between my hand and the blade and it's good to touch this when it's cold so you can see where you know, your hand lines up and you can design it for your hand um, so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna also make this side sharper so I'm gonna pound on that end also so I'm gonna work on the blade make the indention and then you can see how this wing the end piece doesn't line up properly um, I'm gonna either twist it a quarter turn or maybe I'll do one and a quarter turns I don't know yet so we'll figure out what we're doing there but this is what we have and we'll uh, finish this today. Okay, the process goes a lot faster when you have smaller chunks like in there. And it's just easier to work with. I just buried the uh, metal right in there. It's all good, but uh, today I'm going to go a lot faster today. Um, it should be done in no time. Okay, this is what I have so far. I initially was going to do a uh, like a tip down type of deal. Um, I was, you know, this side here. I was, you know, narrowing a little bit. Um, that's the side I was going to have the blade, but that side to switch it around, have a tip up type of deal. And now I'm going to narrow this side. Um, so I decided, you know, what you do is you just kind of, you know, switch this over, you know, like there, and you just kind of hammer the top to get it, you know, back the way you want it to go. And I'm looking here. I see an imperfection on the blade right there. That could um, be a problem, but... This is really not going to be a knife that I'm using all the time, so I really don't care. I'll probably hammer it down, like right there, you know, to kind of uh, see if I can condense the metal a little bit so it doesn't crack on me. Um, at this stage right now, uh, if you want, to, uh, if you care about how it looks, you know, when you have hammer strokes, you know, make sure you nice smooth strokes or even strokes I meant to say that way you don't leave dings in it at this point if you care about looks dings in it I don't think it looks that bad anyway but um, so what I'm doing now I'm just gonna you know clean it up a little bit with some smooth hammer strokes and then I'm, I'm also gonna um, let me see here sorry working with one hand it's hot I can't touch it you know you can see there uh, I'm going to leave a little spot there where it just goes from, you know, wide to whatever, a little spacing in between the blade. I'll leave that like that. But, um, and then I'm going to get this red hot, and I'm going to do a twist on the, uh, the handle. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So. Okay, here we're going to do the twist now. You want to make sure this is super red hot. Line this up wherever you want to, you know, the, so the blade's all the way covered. Make it really tight. I reinforced this thing, this vice cell, but I don't know if I did a good enough job, so we'll see if it holds, and I see it sliding. Oh, you know what? I have to lock it down. But anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a good grip here, and I'm just going to get a good grip here, and I'm just going to twist. should go pretty easily. Oh, this thing's not locked down properly. See how easily that is? Just twist nice and easy. 
Now, I should have taken more time to clean this knife up, but I don't care. I don't. I'm impatient. <laughs> I just get to the point where it's functional, and that's good enough for me. But see all that twist there? You want to twist it around so... Hi, for, where's the... So it lines up with the uh, front of the knife, or the blade part of the knife. Now, did I... Uh, let me just hammer this over a little bit. Oops, it's moving, I'll do that work. Let's see how this came out. Ah, I might have to go back in and do that again. But let me t pull this out. And it twisted it, but it's a little crooked, so I'll have to straighten that out. Um, but that's the, uh, the twist. Let me go ahead and straighten it out. Okay, this is what it looks like now. Um, I straightened it out, just put it back in the vise and just re-straightened it. Um, you know, it's kind of crude looking. Um, we're not quenching it yet, so don't quench it yet. It's still, the metal is still soft. You just kind of want to grind it to the shape that you want to be in. I need two hands for this, but you know, just grind it down to the shape that you want it to be. And then uh, we'll do the next step. So let me just go ahead and grind. And, um, you know, you can do it with a file. You don't need a grinder if you're just getting started. It takes longer, obviously, but um, let me go ahead and do this and then I'll get back. But this is what it looks like now. Okay, as you can see, right here, it just doesn't have a nice transition. So I'm just going to kind of grind down you know, right here. So, and then I'll you know, create more of a, a, a blade form in a bit. But um, I'm going to do that. And grind it down the top, kind of made it to the shape I wanted, sort of, kind of made it smoother toward the end there, I guess, um, you know, I kind of just went straight down, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, you don't want to make it totally sharp, but you know, I'm just going to sharpen it a little bit, or grind it down a little bit, we'll sharpen it later after you do the treatment and everything, but um, I'm not too happy with this, um, don't really like the design too much, but whatever, I'm going with it. So I'm just going to grind it down a little bit. So I don't have to sharpen it as much. So, but we're not making it sharp, we're just grinding it down a little. Okay, that's what we're doing. So the shape's going to be something like, something like that, I guess. Okay, so I'm done grinding, I guess, for now. Um, I just grinded for like two minutes, not even, but, you know, I straightened it out, you know, took out some of the imperfections that, uh, I couldn't do blacksmithing, but this is what the knife is going to look like this time, I guess. Um, you can see, you know, some of the twists look cool going into the blade, some of them, you know, go in there, but I'll show you what it looks like, but, um, it's not that sharp as you can see, there's still, you know, a flat edge on it. Um, I'm going to have to do a heat treat. I'm going to have to heat it up now and uh, quench it in some oil. I'm looking around and I don't have any oil. I had oil in this bucket, so I'm a mess. I don't have anything I need. So this is what it looks like now. We're going to um, make it harder before I sharpen it the rest of the way. And then we'll polish it and I'll show you what it looks like. But um, let me find some oil. Um, let's go. Bye. Okay, I'm utilizing this time. I just fired up the, the uh, forge again. To get out imperfections, as you look there, it's um, not quite straight. So I'm going to get a little straighter, and I'll pound that out. Make sure that everything, you know, is where, you know straight as you want it to be. You know, if you're not pounding hard; just pound a little bit. It doesn't take much just to get it straight. And then we're going to heat this up to full blast. And we're going to do the quench next. So I'll show you that. Okay, I'm firing this up so hot, higher than ever before. Um, just because you want to quench it. So you want it red hot like that. You could do a magnet test. Let's just do it. <laughs> so if the magnet doesn't stick to it, you know it's good. Sorry. <laughs> the magnet doesn't stick to it, you know you're good. So the magnet's not sticking. We can quench this, but I'm going to put it back in because I want extra hot and I'm burning my, uh, my little ram there. All right, so let me get put that back in. Okay, it's quench time. It's nice and hot. You know, I never use a magnet, man. You can tell. You know, you just leave it in there, wait until the whole thing's red hot. You know, the tip on this one is what you want to really concentrate on. So, 
make sure that is, make sure the whole thing is red hot, but make sure that the tip is especially red hot. Um, you know, we'll have a pan here. Um, this one is made of tin. I would suggest something, you know, a little bit sturdier, but um, you have oil in there. So uh, you want the fast, the fast cooling properties of oil. That way uh, it hardens the metal. So either have a very narrow and uh, a one that's tall or have one that's, um, you know, maybe uh, shorter, but, you know, more broader. So you use less oil. But anyways, I have very little oil in there. I found some, but not enough. So this is not, like I said, the ideal situation. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this out and we're going to quench this. Now, when you do this, stand back. You can pack the fire very easily. So you quench that. You just Let that, let that just uh, cool down in there, and that's your fast cool, so um, hopefully this tin will hold out. I've used this tin a couple times, but I had something else before it was a little better. But anyways, so that's the next thing you do. Now you're done with the forge, so you turn it off, and we'll uh, clean it up. Okay, now it's time to temper the knife. So I'm using a toaster oven this time. In the past, I've used, um, if you saw what the um, hair dryer was on. There was like another smaller grill. I put that on top of the uh, fire and I've used that in the past. You want the temperature to be about, you know, between uh, 250 to 350. I've heard other numbers, but you know, that's what I have learned, 250 to 350. Um, now I did something bad uh, when I did the, um, the dipping, um, the quenching there. You know, you should always hold your, you know, your knife, you know, vertically not horizontally. I just didn't have enough oil, so I kind of um, was improvising really, but I forgot about that rule. You always should do it uh, vertically, like this way. It can be, you know, tilted a little bit like that. You know, that's no problem um, because there's bubbles that can, uh, if you do it horizontally like this, there's bubbles that can come up and can warp the knife and then you have to reforge and everything else. So um, try to do it vertically if you can. Um, like I said, you know, make sure you have enough oil in there and make sure your pan is, you know, higher um, that way you can put it in there but um, I didn't just didn't have enough oil I couldn't find oil so I had to do it that way but um, all right so other than that um, you know sometimes when you put this in the toaster oven it does give like an oily smell or whatever so um, you know you might want to do it outside but anyway so I'm going to temper this for about an hour or two um, so we'll just do that all right okay now it's time to you know sand it and get off well, you know, smooth it out a little bit. Now, there's going to be imperfections on it where I hammered. Um, I can grind it out, but I'm not going to do that. I really don't care. But um, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. Now, spots like here and here, you might have to hand do it, or you can use a drill like something like this to get it out. But you can, you know, do the hand here. If you still have to use the grinder to get out imperfections or do whatever, Go ahead and do that. As far as um, the blade, I want to get this all clean before I work on the blade. But um, but I'll just show you how you do the blade. You kind of just you know put it on the grinder and just do both sides until it's nice and sharp. You might want to do the the, um, the 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 real sharp part. You know, like to make it super sharp, razor sharp. You maybe do that by hand, just on sandpaper later. But uh, this will get it to. Uh, the point where you want it to make it easy for the hand sandpaper later. But anyways, so just go ahead and clean this up, you know, all different angles. Clean it up any way you can. And I'll be back with the finished product. Sharpen it up. Use the grinder if you have, if, you know, if, if it's not, you know, if you have to put, you know, take a pair of a lot of metal, use the grinder. But that's good. I found this thing, so this thing is better to, you know, clean it up with, you know, this, you can see the, you know, this is not like the metal cutting one, so, um, you know, they make all different kinds of bristles and stuff, this is not the best one for it, but it's all I can find, um, so I'm going to clean this up with this, and I'll show you how to make a knife with this thing without blacksmithing sometime, but I'll show you that another time, but I'm going to clean it up with this. Well, I finished cleaning up the knife. Well, most of it. I still have to do marks in between with the little tool that you saw. But 
you know, um, I see too many imperfections to really do too much details on this knife and put time into it, to cleaning it up. Um, you know, I see the handle is not that straight, and I talked about the imperfections on the tip. But this is really a display knife, so it really doesn't matter too much about the imperfections because I'm not using this out in the field or anything. But this is the end product. Um, I said, you know, don't um, sharpen it until you're done because, you know, a lot of times when you're cleaning it, you hold it like this. You don't want to cut your hand. So that's why I said that. But anyways, um, you know, I still have to sharpen it a little bit. And I'll do that, but other than that, this is basically a finished product. You can take a look at it. Um, like I said, there's some imperfections. This is backyard blacksmithing. I'm, you know, self-taught for the most part, so not everything's perfect. And I could get it better, but I didn't feel like putting the time into it. But anyways, uh, this is what we have. So this is how you make a knife, and this is the last one I did. So kind of like a butter knife looking thing. So I don't know. Just go out there, and I didn't show you how to, you know, hammer and all that kind of stuff. You know, first of all, I didn't, my cameraman wasn't always here. It's hard to do that and um, hammer at the same, same time. But, um, yeah, just play around with the metal, and you'll learn yourself. So just get out there and try it. It's really easy to do. Like I said, if I can do it, you guys can do it. So just go ahead and uh, give it a shot, and uh, send me an email, or send me, uh, put a comment down. Um, and uh, a link to your site so I can see you know what kind of product you did. You could probably do something better than this. <laughs> but um, this is how you make a knife. All right, see ya.